FBI agent Elvis Chan, the man who is saving America by censoring us from dangerous misinformation. Well, he is with the FBI. He was scheduled to testify in front of Congress. They had him on the calendar and he didn't show up. He ghosted Congress. And now we're trying to figure out what happened because you know, he was involved with a ton of the censorship of the Hunter Biden laptop, suppressing free speech during the 2020 election, misinfo this, disinfo that. We know this guy. We want to hear from him because he was covering up a bunch of the Biden criminality on behalf of the deep state. Well, he was supposed to testify for a deposition in front of the House Judiciary Committee and did not. And so they explain exactly what happened, why he did not show up, and they issued a new subpoena for his booty. Here is what the judiciary tells us happened. They say, look, all right, we send valid subpoenas from Congress and the committee needs answers, but the FBI continues to stonewall them. No amount of lies and excuses are gonna stop us from deposing Elvis Chan. The American people deserve to know what happened. Now they give us a refresher on this, but we know Elvis Chan was colluding with the social media companies to censor the Hunter Biden laptop story. He's lied to us, in my opinion, about this several times, including in his deposition. And they tell us in November, 2022, when Republicans won the House, Congress notified the FBI, we wanna to talk to Elvis. On January 17th, after the start of our Congress, we sent another letter to the FBI telling them, make Elvis Chan available. They claim they didn't know about this until March, 2023, long time. They say, you can take a look at the letters and read for yourself. Now, as a courtesy, the committee permits the government witnesses without personal counsel to come with agency lawyers so that they don't have to go hire their own lawyers. But if the government witness has a personal lawyer, then the rationale for this accommodation no longer applies. Okay, so if you go hire a lawyer, you don't get an agency lawyer. If you don't hire a lawyer, you get an agency lawyer. It's kind of like a government appointed lawyer. The committee's protocol has been clear. The witness may appear with agency counsel or personal counsel, but not both. Simple enough, right? They sent this email from somebody on Tuesday, January 31st, 2023 to FBI.gov from the House of Representatives. Subject, interview of Jill Sanborn, who used to work at the FBI, may be there, or DOJ, one of the two. Hi, somebody, received your email below. This isn't exactly correct, okay? Witnesses appearing for transcribed interviews can attend with personal or agency counsel, but not both. You get one, it's up to the witness, so pick one. Happy to discuss, best regards, call us. Pretty easy, pretty obvious. They should have known that. Now, there is strong precedent behind this protocol, which we'll fast forward through. There's good reason to do it. The committee has scheduled and conducted dozens of interviews with current and former DOJ personnel. It's been following this rule for a while. Now, after months of stonewalling, the committee authorized a subpoena, and we're gonna compel this Elvis Chan to bring his butt there. Sure enough, the FBI reluctantly agreed on August 30th to have Elvis Chan appear, September 15th, and we're waiting for this depot. The FBI knew the committee's protocol since January, and for two weeks, they raised no objection. Yeah, no problem, we'll see you there. Yeah, it sounds good, looking forward to it. Then 65 hours to the start of the interview, things started to get a little squirrely. Late Tuesday afternoon, the DOJ FBI told us for the first time that Elvis Chan had personal counsel and requested an exception be made to our protocols that he wants both agency and personal counsel. You think, oh gosh, this guy. Well, part of the issue here is if you've got agency lawyer there, then the lawyer's probably kind of protecting the agency and that might free you up to be personally liable. But if you don't want to bring your agency lawyer because you don't want the agency lawyer to protect the agency, then you bring your own personal lawyer to protect you and then maybe you can dish out on the agency, right? So you can't bring both. Otherwise, what are we talking to you for? 47 hours then to the start of the interview. By Wednesday morning, the committee had spoken directly to Elvis Chan's personal lawyer. They said, hey, Chan may choose between an agency counsel or personal counsel, but he can't have both. Then 23 hours to the start of the interview. Thursday morning, the committee again follows up with Chan's personal lawyer. His personal lawyer says, uh, hang on, stand by. The committee warns Chan's lawyer, a subpoena has been authorized. So we're not standing by for long. 22 hours to the start of the interview. On Thursday afternoon, Chan's personal lawyer tells committee staff, Chan will not participate in a voluntary transcribed interview under the protocol. Larry Berger, he sends a letter over to Congress. He says, good day, Mrs. Blank. My client, Elvis Chan, informs me that he will not participate in a voluntary transcribed interview with your committee if I, as his personal counsel, together with FBI and or DOJ counsel, are not both admitted to the interview. Respectfully, Larry sent to this person, copied to the FBI. We're not showing up. 
unless we get all the lawyers. So Congress and discussions, they continue into Thursday evening. At 7.38, the committee again says, all right, look, Mr. Chan can have either agency counsel or personal counsel accompany him at the interview, not both. It is Mr. Chan's choice. He better be here. Sent and copied to the FBI, FBI, and Larry Berger. So they send that back over. Now, 14 hours before the interview is gonna start, Mr. Chan, his lawyer says, I will be present on behalf of Mr. Chan for the scheduled interview. What? We don't wanna talk to you, Larry. Larry Berger. We don't wanna talk to you. So he says, I'm gonna show up. Mr. Chan, lawyer states, no mention of the DOJ or the FBI trying to force themselves to appear. The interview appears to be back on. Well, that's not what I read. Less than 12 hours before the start of the interview, the DOJ writes to say that agency counsel will also attend. The committee says that it is not an option being offered and the DOJ should respect Mr. Chan's wishes to appear. So now the DOJ, they say, we're also showing up. And the committee says, hey, just to confirm, you dorks, that's not an option here. Mr. Chan has requested personal counsel. So we respectfully ask that you do not attempt to join. The chairman has authored a deposition, authorized a deposition subpoena for next Thursday, which he has instructed us to serve should there be any issue tomorrow morning. Shout out to Jim Jordan. He says, look, if they're not here tomorrow, issue a subpoena. Love it. So Jordan authorizes it. Less than 90 minutes then to the start of the interview. The DOJ and the FBI say, we're coming. We're coming. And the committee calls and says, okay, well, they're not coming in the interview room. So they're not coming in. I mean, you can show up, but we're not letting you in the room. At 10 a.m., Elvis Chan fails to appear for the interview. Committee drops their subpoena. So now Elvis Chan gets another subpoena. And now he's compelled to appear before October 5th of this year. And let's take a look at the actual document. Here is what it says coming out from Jim Jordan and the Judiciary Committee from Ohio. Dear Elvis Chan. And now look what's happening. See, they're copying both people. They've got Lawrence Berger. Actually, this is his own lawyer now. He's still in the San Francisco field office. Mr. Elvis Chan. They say, all right, Elvis. The Judiciary Committee is conducting oversight of how and to what extent the executive branch has colluded to censor speech. To develop effective legislation, we need to know how we can handle social media companies and other content providers that deplatform users. And in order to do this, we must first understand the nature of your collusion and your coercion. As the primary liaison between the FBI and FIDF, your FBI's Foreign Influence Task Force, you are uniquely positioned to aid in our oversight. But after your failure to appear for your scheduled interview on the 15th, you were issued a deposition subpoena compelling you to appear on the 21st based on the representations that the date of your deposition conflicts with the dates of your official travel will accommodate you, Elvis. And we'll schedule a new date for you on October 5th. They say Congress has brought an indispensable powers granted to us by the Supreme Court and the rules say we can do this. And so that's what we've done. Accordingly, please find again a subpoena. Sincerely, your friend, Jim Jordan, chairman of the Judiciary Committee. So this goes over to Elvis Chan and Elvis Chan, we'll see if he shows up in October. Not sure that is going to happen. So that is from Elvis. Now, part of the issue here is the federal bureaucracy censoring people, keeping people from communicating their minds, from participating in free society. And when that happens, when people don't have a voice, people feel like their government is illegitimate. They feel like they are oppressed. They feel like they are being attacked. It's supposed to be a democratic republic with a representative type of democracy where the voices are heard. If the voices are silenced, people are not heard. If the voices are silenced, our government is not serving us. This is the point that Miss Victoria Sparks makes. Attorney General, you had a very moving statement about your grandparents coming here from Belarus to live in the country without fear of prosecution. I grew up in very similar country, Ukraine now, and when I came here as a young person, I believed in the value as an American not to be afraid of my government. But I wanted to tell you, and I want to share with you and get your thoughts on that. Are you aware that a lot of Americans are now afraid of being prosecuted by your department? Are you aware about that? Are you aware of that? I'm just saying, are you aware or not? I think that constant attacks on the department and saying no, it's that- It's not the, attacks. Well, let me give you an example. I don't know. We talk what, about January 6th. People. I'm sorry? Here, there are some people came on January 6th. There are probably were some people that came on January 6th here, you know, that had bad intent. But a lot of good Americans from my district came here because they are sick and tired of this government not serving them. They came with strollers and the kids, and there was chaotic situation because the proper security wasn't provided. That's a question that was answered. 
answered really why. Why we debated for 45 minutes on the floor and didn't stop the debate after the people broke in into the Capitol. But these people came, they were throwing the smoke bombs into the crowd with strollers with kids. People were showed up, you know, FBI agent to people's houses. You had in my district, in my town, FBI phone numbers all over the district. Please call, call that. People are truly afraid. I just want to make sure if you're not aware that you are. And this is a big problem when people are afraid of their own government. And I'll show you some other things. We're talking about justice system. I don't question, you're probably not a bad person. I don't know you, but well, I'll tell you, you're in charge of the department. And people right now feel, you know, I look at Durham report and I call on the FISA violations of queries of millions of Americans, right? It's like KGB, but when I read Durham report, you have a nice, you know, playbook. First, let's have a special counsel, and then you don't have to answer any questions here. Then, exactly let's right. extend Protect slow walk investigation. Hillary Clinton on Hunter, everything is slow walk. We were very quick on Donald Trump, but you were very slow walk. Then, by the time, you know, that investigation and its statute of limitation expired, yep. and all of your agents need to be tested for amnesia. No one recalls anything. Nobody okay, recalls you anything. Have as part of your Even hiring Merrick. policy. So no one held accountable, which was egregious what happened, you know, in that report when I read with them. I can't believe it happened in the United States of America. This is my frustration. I'll be honest with you. Then it's very interesting, you know, regardless what it is, even people in Obama administration raise concerns. You know, how can President Sanz be serving on, you know, corrupt Ukrainian oligarchs? Do you understand that it actually can undermine the one Ukrainian effort and policy? I think these concerns were raised. The Obama administration didn't do anything about it. These people are dying right now and Americans don't trust this president. So you, I want to ask you one thing, you know, as you, you know, I don't need answer because I know you're not going to, but I think you're probably good American and you care. And a lot of these people are so afraid they cover up this stuff, I think, in your department because they're embarrassed that what we became as a country to say that what our Department of Justice became. That allows Russians to do propaganda in Chinese. It allows them to destabilize our country. That is danger to our republic. It is significant danger. And I have just one more question from you. You know, and I mean, I agree on corporate crimes and FISA stuff, even with Democrats, that we need to do a better job. One more question for you. Do you believe that, you know, you talk about rights to vote, but do you believe that only U.S. citizens should be voting in this election and doing anything to make sure that only eligible people vote in elections? Yes and yes. Okay, I would like to see that, what you do. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Good for her, man. Miss Sparts, man, she is absolutely right. What we're seeing here is reminiscent of communist era tactics. It is a horrific thing for people who have left that world to land here and see the same type of leadership, the same type of justice in her own doorsteps. So it's a horrific thing. Shout out to Representative Sparts for delivering that. And of course, we'll continue to cover, my friends. We'll see what happens if FBI agent Elvis Chan shows up for a depot or not. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for visiting robertgovea.com to sign up for our daily newsletter delivered to your inbox. And we'll look forward to seeing you on the next one. Mm -hmm.